Okay. Um, okay, so Jackie, we are live on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me start sharing my screen. That um, way. Okay, so Jackie, we are live on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. All right. Da, da, da. Okay. So. Um, Welcome everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on whatever time zone you guys are in. I am in China. This is 10 a.m. And I think our speaker is in Malaysia. So it's 10 a.m. there as well. So good morning to people who are joining in from China, Malaysia, or this time zone, whatever it is. Um, my name is Faizan Ali. I'm an assistant professor and graduate program coordinator at the College of Hospitality and Tourism Leadership, University of South Florida, Sarasota, Manatee. Um, this uh, webinar, it's sort of a chit chat with uh, Dr. Jackie, who I'm going to introduce very soon, uh, is brought to you by M3 Center for Hospitality Technology and Innovation, as well as Association of North America Higher Education International. Now, this webinar is only streamed on uh, YouTube, uh, as we have been advertising uh, on Facebook. So if you are joining on YouTube, you are more than welcome to share the live stream on your social media channel. I'll be doing it very soon as well. Um, the idea for this uh, webinar came from a lot of discussion on social media. So people have been talking about higher order models or hierarchical component models. Uh, the main issue is people do not understand how to estimate it because there are so many different methods. Uh, which method is the right method or which method should be used in different scenarios. Um, there's some literature, but then the problem is how to do it using a software. We don't really have something like this. So that's how the idea came. Um, I, I should al also acknowledge that I've uh, tried to talk to some other scholars like Dr. Marco, um, who said that he will be doing another video really soon. So stay tuned for su uh, such video, which would be coming soon on these uh, social media channels. Um, going ahead. Um, as I said, this one is coming from uh, my YouTube channel, which is called Research Peace. There's a lot of different videos that I've uploaded on this uh, YouTube channel. Um, there's a list of these 10 videos that uh, so far I've uploaded on this uh, YouTube channel. So if you are new to this live stream, I would highly recommend you subscribing to the channel. Uh, plus, uh, click the bell icon so that you do not miss any update or any live stream that uh, I'm planning a lot of new things. Um, going ahead, my background, I am um, not only the graduate program coordinator for my college, I'm also director of research for SEXA, which is a federation under ICRI. Uh, Director of Research Methods and Statistics for Anahe. Uh, I'm working in various editorial uh, roles for different journals like IJCHM or Journal of Hospitality, Tourism and Technology. Uh, I'm also acting as coordinating editor for IJHM, associate editor for uh, European Journal of Tourism Research and Journal of Global Business Insights, and also serving on scientific board members or editorial board members for six top tier hospitality and services journals. So that's pretty much about uh, my background. In lieu of all these things that I do, uh, I'm trying to create these videos and resources for students who do not have uh, access to such resources. Um, so if you have, um, if you are teaching any research methods related courses, I would again highly recommend you subscribing to the channel. Uh, going ahead, so let's let's talk about our expert. I um, I. I actually tried to find a cool picture for Dr. Jackie uh, on, Google, on Google. He is a cool guy, so I, I found this cool picture. So um, Dr. Jackie, I know him for almost, uh, I guess, uh, four or five years. I met him at one of the workshops in Malaysia, which was on partially squares. Um, 
my um, uh, Jackie recently finished his PhD and um, he is now a senior lecturer at the Faculty of Economics and uh, Management at University Putra Malaysia, UPM, which is a very, very good university and they are very active in research. In fact, my younger sister just finished her master's from UPM and she's extremely excited about it. Um, Dr. Jackie teaches principles of management, marketing management, techno entrepreneurship and research methods related courses. He is a trained expert in structural equation modeling. And because of that, he also facilitates workshops on research methodology at SPSS, SMO, Smart PLS, uh, at ANCO, at both undergraduate and postgraduate level for universities and other consultancy research bodies. His area of interest is consumer behavior, marketing strategy, advertising, and methodological issues. And the reason why I'm mentioning it here is if anybody of you want to work with Dr. Jackie in any collaborative projects, you're more than welcome to access or write an email to him and work with him. He has published extensively in top tier journals and business and uh, hospitality and tourism related journals. There are, there are so many of them. I just removed all the names of those journals because uh, that would ask me to go on two other slides and we don't have that much time. So I just say that he has published extensively. He has co-authored two books on application of PLS. I've used those books, very, very easy to understand, very, very easy to read, very practical. Uh, so maybe Jackie can talk about those books later on if he wants. Uh, again, if you do not have your hands on those books, I, I highly recommend, especially for students or people who are venturing into PLS, those books have a lot of screenshots and really um, uh, books for beginners into PLS. So I, I really uh, recommend those books to those who are venturing into PLS. Uh, he is currently appointed as guest editor for British Food Journal, Young Consumers, uh, European Business Review and International Journal of Manpower uh, for different special issues that he is working on. I really don't know how he does it, but he does it all. So Jackie, um, this uh, obviously is not all of your introduction, but I think that's uh, what's the most of it I took out from your bio. So um, having said that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen um, and I will hand it over to you if you want to say anything. And after that, I'll start asking you some questions. Those of uh, you who are watching the webinar on YouTube, I would recommend you to put your questions in the comment section so that we can ask those questions later on, okay? Um, Jackie, uh, yeah. do you wanna share something? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, I'll share my screen right now. Uh, can you see my PowerPoint? Can you see my PowerPoint? Uh, yes, yes, okay. Jackie, yes. Yeah, so, uh, super cool. Huh? Uh, mm -hmm. first, of, first of all, I would like to thank to uh, Dr. Faizan uh, for inviting me to you know give a talk on this hierarchical order construct or some should say higher order construct in PLS SEM. And it was super fun and very intimidating in the very first beginning because uh, <laughs> well, I think this is my first time <laughs> to do such a thing. But never mind. Uh, yeah, today is the topic is about higher order, second order construct. And when we talk about higher order construct, you know, these are the, I mean, the two, the two big books, you know, a primer on PLS and the advanced issue in PLS, I think it's the best book to look into the second order construct. But along the way, uh, yeah, my colleagues and I have written another PLS book, which if you're interested, you can actually, you know, venture or maybe get one of it to, you know, learn more about the PLS stuff. So um, a bit introduced about myself. Uh, thanks to Faisal Ali, super introdu introduction about me. Uh, of course, my name is Jackie Chia, but some people know me as Jun Hua Chia. So uh, I was like, previously my job, my first job was in UTN, International Business School. And it was like a uh, very fun uh, working environment where from there, I started to move into a uh, back to my old university, which is UPM right now, currently. And my interest of research is more towards modeling. As you can see from the top right-hand side, there's a modeling stuff. And yeah, I also started to, you know, you know when we talk about method, I guess Faisan also, you are all into method, right? So 
yeah, we also like look into try to look into different way of methods doing research, like you know, looking to like mediation, moderation. Try to try on different software like Amos, uh, Stata. Uh, try to work on some R Studio stuff and some you know social network analysis, like looking to Lexi Mensa and so on. And some of my background will be like you know co-managing editors. I think Faisal had mentioned that and guest editor and some attachment and some publication this year which are progressing very well thanks to my colleagues that always been there for me, that helped me, you know, throughout the journey of my career. So, uh, ongoing collaboration and learning. Uh, a bit last, some introduction is, uh, yeah, I've been working uh, quite hard through some certain conference, become a visiting keynote speaker for their conference. Yeah, we have PLS 2020, I would like to promote right now, that it will be in Beijing next year, March 17 to 19. So, if you're interested for PLS, you should actually join this big conference. Uh, you also can meet all the PLS user there. Uh, Faizan is there. <laughs> Everyone is there. So you all should go. And yeah, there are some conferences, you know, we are working very hard. Like upcoming will be the SASEM uh, 2019. It will be in uh, Malacca this year, August. If you're interested, uh, I guess that uh, you should, you know, try to invest some time, some money just to join this conference SASEM. Yeah, I think that's a bit on some stuff. I think let's cut to the chase, right? I mean, people want to know more about higher order construct. Uh, before I start, I would like to let you know that uh, when we talk about higher construct, I'm, yeah, I'm into higher order construct, but I'm not really that, you know, very in-depth compared to those uh, giants in PLS, like, you know, Marco Sastert, Christian Ringler, or Jan Michael Becker. Those are really, you know, they are actually working into this higher order constructing. But these are some reference that you can see uh, when you really want to work on higher order construct. So, uh, I again, I say that I don't really work on higher order construct, uh, but uh, when I try to look back on many, um, review of research in PLS, especially uh, those like uh, review on the past study, what have been done in different areas or contexts like uh, hospitality and tourism, marketing, operation management. But you see, if you can see the latest one will be, uh, I think Faizan, your paper, right? Faizan Ali, you can see that. So that yes. paper really, you know, uh, because of that paper, I start to realize that there are many guidance out there using HCM or higher order construct, but still, according, I, I just use one, you know, one scholar by Ali et al. 2018, raised the same concern on hospitality research, stating that 29 articles, only nine uses HCM. What happened? You know, the question here is like, what happened? You know, there has been in 2012 started, uh, 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 written by this Christian Ringler and, and the team, and as well as uh, Jan Michael Becker in 2012, also written on the, the second order. But there are techniques out there available, but still, uh, many review on PLS, there are not many research using HEM. Is it HEM really a big problem to actually conduct and actually you know assess for empirical research? Because this, you know, this point itself ponders me to actually, you know, look forward to actually, why not? I try to look into what's the actually issue of using uh, HGM. Is it so that that difficult? So therefore that venture me, yeah. That inspired me is from these two papers. Yeah, I just to let you all know first. So uh, a bit about higher order construct. Um, so higher order construct can be looked into, you know, this level of abstraction where allowing a model to construct on a higher level of abstraction with concrete sub-dimension. So it's from the dimension itself, which is a uh, level one itself, then slowly started to form the second order. And it need a very high level of abstraction thinking whether it should or not should to be a second order or higher order construct. This is something that really need to look into uh, for many uh, scholars, especially young scholars who today love to look into uh, second order construct. So uh, to keep it more simple and easy, so when we look into higher order construct or some people say a hierarchical component model, uh, it can be looked at in a very simple way where you have indicators and then you have a second order components and you have also first order components. And the first order components or first order models have a server dimension itself with its item to form the second order components. This is a very simple example of how we actually can look into a second order construct. 
Having to say that, some of the example of higher order construct, which I think quite interesting would be like knowledge, knowledge sharing. When we talk about knowledge sharing, previously knowledge sharing is like look into implicit and explicit of knowledge, uh, knowledge sharing to form this knowledge sharing. And people started to evolve by looking into more different aspect of dimension to actually look into knowledge sharing. So this is some example. Another example in marketing orientation would be uh, marketing intelligence, dissemination, as well as responsiveness towards market orientation. These are some of the examples of when we can actually look into second order construct. Very simple, clear cut. But right now, uh, there's some uh, important stuff to know why uh, you need actually HCM or higher order construct in research. And this is one thing that uh, keep spices towards our research framework to make it more, you know, complex, looks more sophisticated and elegant when we actually run on this structural model assessment in PLS or maybe our research framework. So one of the reasons why uh, today, I think one of the reasons why today uh, there are some new scholars started to venture, especially PhD scholars started to venture, venture on this uh, higher order construct is because it can exploit certain favorable characteristics. What does it mean? It means that you can try different dimensions uh, to actually form a second order construct. And that's what people are looking to it. Uh, it's like very simple, clear cut. It's like you like want to bake a cake, right? When you want to bake a cake, what ingredient you need to have to bake a perfect cake? You need a sugar, you need a flour, you need a, you know, a chocolates and maybe a different flavor of colorings just to, you know, make it into higher order construct, which is the cake. So that's what makes people love to use higher order construct. Another reason why people like to use higher order construct is because uh, to encourage model to be more parsimonious, where researcher would not need to test uh, many, many hypotheses uh, just to lead to one dependent variables in a research framework to keep it more simple and to keep it, you know, um, your model to be more parsimonious. A best way to do it is use the higher order construct. And last but not least, uh, there are some dilemmas on whether people to choose higher order construct or just to test at the lower order construct with the dimension itself. So it's about bandwidth fidelity dilemma, where according to which there's a trade-off between uh, the variety of information and throughoutness of testing to obtain more certain information. So if there's a trade-off whether to just test second order construct or maybe to test just the lower order components. So these are the things that, you know, why people to choose or not to choose higher order construct. Last but not least is because of collinearity. Some say that when you have discriminant issue, uh, validity issue, you can actually form the higher order construct to reduce or to uh, the effect of the discriminant validity. So higher order construct can be used in many different purpose. And these are the four simple purpose that I think why people use higher order construct. Uh, to move on, uh, thanks to another ponder about higher order construct is uh, when you do higher construct order construct, I think one of the biggest problem for many scholars today is because they just simply use higher order construct where you know they just wanted to use it so that the model looks complicated in their research. And they can think that, oh, that could be a very high novelty in terms of research. But uh, from my understanding and from my point of view, uh, no offense that uh, to do so, it's quite a risky task. Uh, if you ask me whether I would like to use higher order construct, I could think twice before I use it because it's quite uh, tricky and risky. Why? Because you need a theory to support the use of higher order model. It's not an easy task because some uh, higher order could be confusing. Like for example, uh, I, I met a PhD student who tell me that he would like to look into management characteristic as a second order construct to lead into company performance. But the question here is, is there really have management characteristic as a second order construct? So these are some things that you need to really think, not just because you want to make it a higher order model to look complicated. And this is something, again, you need to watch out because theories, measurement theory or theory must support the decision on use of higher order models. And another thing to ponder, which is the second thing is 
uh, I think people started to get confused to when they move into higher order is because to the decision to determine whether the measurement model specification for lower order component as well as the higher order component. Because having said that, you have both reflective and formative, right? Lower order can be reflective, higher order can be formative or the other way around. So in this case, um, if you look into um, Hair at all, 2017 or 18, their PLS book and mentioned there are four types of possible second order construct, which I will be explained next slide. And another thing why people started, uh, one of the biggest issue people keep on asking in smart PLS forum, if I recall, is they do not, you know, they were asking how to assess uh, the lower order as well as higher order construct. And one of the important is, you know, whether should I assess reliability, validity in lower order components if you do reflective way? So there are a lot of questions on higher order construct that people are pondering. On top of that, some erroneously interpret the relationship between higher and lower order components as a structural model relationship. This is even worse where people think that lower order to the higher order construct is actually a relationship testing thing. So there are many things to ponder uh, why, uh, you know, there are issues why people, you know, worry when they use HGM, although they're interested to use it. So these are the things to, you know, look into it. And not last but not least, it's also the discriminant validity issue. Some people do not want to assess the low order. Some people do not want to assess the higher order also. So they are the things that, you know, need to try to reflect and think back why people need to, uh, really, really seriously look into higher order and really read very detailed on all the literature on how to actually execute such a thing. So uh, to, you know, to keep it more simple and easy, just now I mentioned there are type of second order construct. You can have the reflective reflective, which is a type one. You can have the reflective formative, which is the type two. You have the uh, formative reflective, which is the type three, as well as the formative formative. Looking at the arrow itself, you can see you have the uh, lower order and the higher order, and you can see how the arrow works, right? This, you can actually get it by Jarvis McKenzie Posako 2003, as well as, if, as well as you can actually look it into the PLS book itself, the primer PLS book by Hare all 2017. But uh, currently, I'm looking into this one, which is the wild type, which uh, there's, no, there's no literature yet. It's a mixed formative reflective. You know, why when we talk about lower order components, it should be standard. When reflective, it should be reflective. When it's formative, it should be formative. Why not? It could, it could be, you know, a mix. When you do a skill development, especially looking into Churchill or Diwali's at all, um, they have said that, you know, when you do a sub-dimension to form a second order construct, you can look into different variation of lower order components. But we always do it in the type 1 to type 4. The question here is, why not there's a type 5? But this is uh, uh, not yet in research and it's just my thought to whether to eventually to pursue or further my research on higher order construct. But this is some sharing that I think it will be possible for the next coming years in PLS. So uh, uh, back to this thing, uh, the current, if you ask me, uh, some people ask me what type of second order construct would be best used. And right now, people started, especially in PLS, they started to move reflective, reflective to reflective formative. And why they started to move reflective, reflective to reflective formative is because according to Cadogan and Lee 2013, they mentioned that there's no such thing called reflective, reflective and does not exist and it is meaningless to actually test reflective, reflective. And that's the reason why today many people started to move into reflective formative is because in reflective, reflective, if one, if in your lower order component, which is this one, and this one itself, you have a low loading of one of the dimension here, you should actually delete it is off, right? But it does not make sense if to delete this thing, if you want to form a particular second order construct. For example, when we look into service quality, service quality itself from Parasuraman, you have you know, five dimension. But if you actually, all of a sudden, one of the dimension itself, you have low loading, you, have, you should actually delete off, right? So there's no such thing to delete one of the dimension in service quality to form service quality. Completely does not make sense, therefore, Kadogun and Lee 2013 have mentioned that why not we look into another aspect, which is reflective formative. 
because reflective reflective um, the dimension itself is actually unidimensional and it's interchangeable but what right now is actually multi-dimensional from the lower order components to expect itself to form the second order so uh, i will look i think the trend right now will be type 2 reflective formative so uh, yeah if you're interested you actually should look into it so uh, a bit more uh, about this higher order is like yeah you know typical research question of type one is there any underlying factors the first order construct to explain so sometimes researcher can actually oh i just test on i don't want to test second order i can test four independent variables like you can see on the left hand side which is this one but some people might think that oh doing this way would sounds better to further explain on the particular concept the overall concept of the particular idea like the service quality which i explained so these are the things that you know can contribute towards second order whether to do it or not but of course again it's based on measurement theory and structural theory whether it um, whether uh, it is a mass or whether uh, it is suitable to form a second order construct so these are the few things that to have a look and interestingly when you do a second order construct if you see in the model a uh, you doing so you will definitely have lower r square compared to the model b as i as you can see in my slide why because uh, when you use model a the 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 in sample prediction power will be always lower because you just have one i independent variables predicting on n1 n2 n3 which is your dependent so you will definitely have lower r square this is the trade off uh, to use a uh, second order or not if you compare to model b where all the arrows is pointing at your dependent variables where you have higher chance to get a better r square so there's a trade off you know both of it and yeah to choose second order or not it depends on uh, researcher choice to do it right or wrong yeah so method to estimate hcf uh, looking back on like the first method itself is the standard repeated indicator approach by world 1982 then uh, started in uh, i think mis quarterly paper written by ringel at all 2012 they uh, they further they further improve the repeated indicator approach and call it as joint two stage approach where you started from repeated indicator approach then you save the score of the latent variable score and form a second order construct and recently uh, also uh, there's another two stage approach by Becker 2012 but they started to name it recently when I you know talk to them is call it this joint two stage approach where you do not have to do repeated indicator approach at the first stage you just need to do it where you are uh, the higher uh, the lower order components you save the score then only move to the second stage where you save uh, and where you do the second order construct with the latent variable score and of course uh, in Becker 2012 itself they also further extend a technique called repeated indicator approach where i'm going to show a couple uh, more uh, moments later and there's another technique called hybrid approach developed by wilson and hansler 2013 and also got latest one three-stage approach by ram Real 2017 good approach uh but still the use of it i think there might be a uh argument between whether you should do it in the composite way or maybe you should do it in the factor model way using plsc there are you know debates on this thing which i will not cover on that this is after the expert to cover and i recently looked into another expect uh it's inspired by van real also the paper is improved extended repeated indicator approach where i uses the lower order construct reliability to insert into the second order construct and i believe in doing so the result of estimation in structural model will give you more precise result in terms of the path coefficient as well as the significant level or maybe effect size as well as the predict, uh, prediction level so these are some methods so uh, to keep it short and simple when you do a uh, repeated indicator approach which is this approach uh, simple is like you know you have a lower order construct which is your dimension then you have your item what you have is take all the item to insert here Itself. So this is a very clear cut repeated indicator approach. You can do in different type of mode, and you have second order construct. And second order construct uh, very useful if your second order construct is an endogenous variable. Why? Because when you have a second order construct as your endogenous variables, your R square 
which is a formative or second order construct, you almost have a value of equal one, which is bad. And there's no such thing where R squared is actually almost equal to one. Therefore, uh, that makes two stage very useful to actually use it in the second order construct. Uh, second order construct. Yeah. So some example will be something like this, where you have your uh, lower order construct and this is your dependent variables. You save the score of this, the first two, three dimension, and you form it into like that, such a way. This is how to work in the second order construct. And yeah, this is what uh, another construct which I will be sharing today, the extended repeated indicator approach. Uh, this to overcome a lot of issue. You know, when you say that uh, your second order construct is an endogenous or mediator, R squared is equal to one, but doing this technique itself, which is using the total effect, as from IV to your dimension and your dimension to your mediator as your second order, you can actually avoid many issues in terms of the path coefficient issue as well as the R square issue. Also, there are this saying that two stage is always better than the uh, repeated indicator approach because if your lower order construct have different, uh, not equal numbers of items, using two stage will be more stable. But let me tell you that using this technique itself, uh, you can actually solve the problem of what people said uh, the disadvantage of the repeated indicator approach, which I will be sharing in a short while. So uh, for reading, yeah, this is my paper on QQ, uh, quality and quantity. You can read it, yeah, inspired by yeah, Ali's paper 2018. I cite the paper most of the time. Yeah, yeah, another paper, I think, uh, I think like what uh, Faizan uh, Ali mentioned just now that uh, I really hope that Marco can give a talk, uh, one more talk on this higher order construct where recently uh, our ha we have one paper which is uh, just accepted, I think will be forthcoming soon, on how to specify, estimate and validate higher order construct in PLS SCM. Will be a very detailed step-by-step uh, -step on how to, how to actually handle reflective, reflective and reflective formative and what should actually uh, need to uh, expect in terms of uh, writing or estimating or maybe interpreting the lower order and higher order in terms of the validation process. This is one uh, current paper that, uh, yeah, uh, this paper, I think I should say, give credit to Suster, Becker and Ringler. They are the one, they are the mastermind behind this paper. Yeah, I just work with them. Yeah, so yeah, I think they are, they are the one. I think they will be soon out this paper. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> just to a bit promote after that you know i can show you how to do the pls stuff so uh yeah my upcoming conference sasem 2019 i hope you guys will be interested if you want to know more about second order professor dr christian ringler and professor marco saster will be in malaysia and yeah you can ask them more about the higher order stuff because looking at the paper previous just now that slide on uh, australian marketing journal they the one is the you know mastermind behind the paper credit to them yeah so i hope you can join this thing and yeah thank you uh faizan would i show how to do on the pls stuff uh yes jackie thank you very much i i you know i, I really like it you you talked about the theory a little bit not too deep into it but a little bit which is good because uh, most of the people who are watching would be more interested in how do, how to do it really right yeah yeah yeah, so uh, yeah. again, thank you for sharing all this theory. So yes, you, you please go ahead and um, you know share your screen to show how actually to do it practically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me hear new share and yeah. Uh, share. Can you see it right now in PLS Smart PLS? Yes. Okay. So uh, I think I start with the basic repeater indicator approach. Uh, yeah, very simple. Uh, very simple. I just draw the model to keep it fast because two stage is what people really want to look into it. But I just make it simple because this is the basic one, right? So uh, for the basic repeater indicator approach, assuming you have a second order called trust, and trust itself has three dimensions of lower order components, which is benevolent, credibility, and integrity. And your dependent variable, or should I say endogenous variable, will be attitude. So right now, we want to work on this thing. To work on this thing, uh, very simple. Uh, let, me, let me show you a quick one. Okay. 
assuming this is your lower order uh, components, which is benevolent credibility uh, integrity. So to form a second order, you form a second order using the repeated indicator approach. It's very clear cut. You just need to have the same item that you have, insert this as a, another construct, and you hide this thing, simply hide this thing, and you can actually form it, and this will be your second order construct. Very clear cut, very clear cut. So if you want to run a normal PLS algorithm, you just run, and here you go, like, you know, this is the result of how to do a, you know, very basic repeated indicator approach. But uh, like what I mentioned just now, things started to get tough. If look into um, higher order construct as an endogenous variable or mediator. So uh, I have prepared on it, assuming something like this. This is the repeated indicator. Uh, yeah, let me, uh, this repeated indicator approach where your higher order construct is your mid. Yeah, let me make it easy for you to see. Okay. Okay, something like this. You have price image as your independent rivals, you have trust as your mediator, and you have attitude as your last uh, output or maybe endogenous variable. And right now, if you just, you know, simply follow on that process and just run, you have one issue. The issue is 0.997. And your path coefficient from price image to trust have an issue where your path coefficient is super, super low, it's nearly almost zero, and it does not make sense that prior image lead to trust is like not significant here. And therefore, uh, if you recall my slides on the, uh, by extend, extended repeated indicator approach by Jan Michael Becker 2012, they suggest that you can actually connect your price image to benevolence, price image to credibility, and price image to integrity. Having to do so, uh, this technique, it is itself, it's itself, it called the total effect of, uh, total effect of repeated indicator approach because it is like a mediator. So, and then you, when you run itself, you will get this result, but you need to do some changes, which is your path quotient need to change to total effect because it's like mediator. Now, if you look into the result, you have 0 0.606. This is the true result if you control uh, using this uh, extended improved, uh, improved repeated indicator approach. But still, there's one problem. Your R score is 0 0.997. Therefore, my, my advice would be when you save the latent variable score, which is uh, when you, this is your report, right? you save your latent variable score, you try to use a result called trust, just the trust, just the trust. Ignore, ignore benevolent, ignore credibility, ignore integrity, and just one latent variable score on trust. And you try to run an R square or maybe blindfolding or maybe PLS predict, you will get a true value of R square to correct this issue. And this value itself will have a bad, better value than a two-stage approach, okay? So this is how to do the extended uh, improve, uh, extended repeated indicator approach. And if for my approach, you can just simply left click on trust and you know the three, okay, let me explain again, the benevolence, credibility, and integrity, all these three itself will have reliability, right? So you need to plus everything, divide by, how many dimension you have, you will get an average reliability. From here, just double click on this trust, you can actually insert the reliability value here. When you insert reliability value here, it makes more sense than just assuming in PLS that you're just assuming PLS reliability is equal to one. It's, it is impossible reliability equals to one because uh, three dimension itself, when you divide by the uh, reliability score, it will not, it will not be one. It would not be one. So therefore, you can actually do, do so. But having said doing so, uh, there's also there are certain debates whether to do it or not, which I can actually explain later. But let us move on to the other method approach first. And yeah, another way will be the I start with the Ringler, Ringler uh 
two stage approach. If you look about, if you look into the Ringler two stage approach, it is just like the repeated indicator approach where I show you all the items is like that. It's, you know, all the item will be like that. Okay. Uh, wait, I forget to do something. The item should be like that, repeated indicator approach. But what you need to do is just need to PLS algorithm and you start calculation and then you will have your report go to your latent variable score, you just need to save the score here. So I just do a quick one on saving the score, uh, Excel format. And then I save the, I click Excel format, I save the score and go to my data set. And you can simply just paste the corner of the right hand side. And I will save it another folder called with latent variable score. So from here, I have saved in the Excel uh, with the new data of latent variable score. From here, I just need to insert uh, this new folder, new data, which is complete retailing 400 with latent variable score. I have named it latent variable score and just click on it, okay. From here, you will use this new data set rather than this data set. You're gonna use this new data set and back to our model just now. From here, uh, I can simply uh, duplicate it, this model, so that I have my, I can maintain just now that model and I can duplicate it and name it the join two. Okay. So I have this thing, the same thing. So what I need to do is I need to drop this three dimension. And this show indicator, I drop, simply drop this thing. And right now I have benevolent, I have credibility, I have integrity, and this one will be switched to like that, reflective formative. And this is how you're gonna run your two-stage approach where it will looks in the end would be something like this. And you just need to click calculate, PLS algorithm and start calculation. You will have your result of this value, this value, and this value, and your R square value, as you can see here, R square. So this is how you're gonna do the Christian Ringler approach. I call it Ringler, Ringler approach in the very beginning, 2012, but currently they call it as joint two-stage approach, where you have joined from repeated indicator to two-stage. The other approach by Jan Michael Becker will be very simple. You just need to click on this um, same thing, but then right now will be, no, same thing, same model, but right now you do not have the second order construct. And your independent variables, which is price, image, attitude, will then point to benevolence, credibility, integrity. And from benevolence, credibility, integrity, the arrow will point towards the attitude. So this is how it's gonna look like if you do the disjoint two-stage approach by Jan Michael Becker, 2012. From there, the same process. You need to click calculate, PLS algorithm, start calculation, then you save the latent variable score. The same process, you save it and you save it, you put it into the Excel sheet that you have, and then the same process where you save the new file data and then you run it into this manner. Again, this manner is the same process. But having said that, uh, my paper on this, uh, my paper, this uh, quality and quantity, Chia uh, et al. 2019 have, uh, I mean, with my, my finding itself shows that regardless you use join to stage or disjoint to stage by Jan Michael or Christian, the result will come to the same conclusion. It's the same. But uh, if you ask me whether would you prefer two stage or maybe uh, the extended improved repeated indicator approach like this one just now I show you guys this one. I will, oh, I will opt to use this one. Uh, from my findings, I will opt to use this one because uh, I have run 
the model selection criteria, a new criteria technique uh, created by uh, Sharma et al. 2019, as well as uh, did a PLS predict, my result shows that uh, using extended uh, in, uh, repeated indicator approach, we produce a better result in terms of predicting compared to the two stage. Because two stage itself, you have one issue, an issue called confounding effect. A confounding effect means you do not run the whole model, uh, the whole model simultaneously in a normological network. You run splitting it. When you run splitting it, I mean, split from the first dimension to the second order dimension, you will somehow lose information. When you lose information, you have and deflate value of path cohesion or maybe variance in terms of result. So if you ask me, I would choose extended uh, improve or extended uh, repeated indicator approach. But if you are, you know, uh, starting, started to use, uh, you know, started to venture this second order construct, I will opt to use a basic repeat indicator approach as well as the two stage approach. Because in the end, the findings, I mean, yeah, the value will not deviate that much. It's still there. So if you're more advanced, you can go further. Yeah. And last but not least, for high hybrid approach, it's something like this. It is just like repeated indicator approach. The one problem here is uh, if I show you the indicators, you can see I randomly pick item from the lower order construct to form the second order construct. This is the hybrid approach. So uh, this technique, uh, according to Wilson and Hansel 2013 in the past, it will be quite outstanding technique. But the question here is which item should randomly form a second order construct. So this is another issue that people really never thought of, but actually, you know, can actually venture or not to further this technique. That's something to, you know, for other researchers to think about. So I think uh, I end my case. Uh, that's all about the second order construct. I keep it short and simple, yeah. So Faizan, your, your turn, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jackie. It's uh, really interesting. I think this will be very helpful to a lot of people because not many people understand how to do all these different approaches. So thank you for it. Um, I've got a lot of questions uh, on Facebook, on uh, YouTube, on LinkedIn. And those questions are pretty much the same. Uh, the questions are about the use of the software. So right now, uh, we are doing this in Smart PLS, right? Uh, yeah. The question is, is it similar in uh, AMOS or M plus or the theory and the, all the background conceptualization is different? Yeah. Uh, so the question is uh, whether, you know, this second order construct is similar when you're using PLS, whether it's similar to using CB, SCM software like M plus, AMOS and so on, right? Uh, yeah. my, uh, my question here is visualization wise, it sounds the same, especially when you look into the type one reflective, reflective. But estimation wise, there's a big problem. Again, back to the understanding, put aside high order construct, back to understanding of a uh, factor model as well as composite modeling. If you use factor model to form a second order construct, you only can do a reflective, reflective way because you will have an issue called factor indeterminacy which is uh, people started to debate in the second order con uh, for the CBSCM. But if you focus on more towards prediction, uh, I think it's best to use a composite modeling like PLS, where you can do different variation of type, which is reflective, 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 formative, formative, reflective, formative, formative. And this is something interesting in PLS that can be done only in PLS rather in CBSCM. Again, why can be done in PLS is because of you can have a latent variable score that do not have factor indeterminacy. That is the reason why people in PLS uh, started to you know can move into second order construct, third order construct without having issue. Even you have an issue of reflective reflective, they also can actually look into reflective formative without having issue of you know discriminant validity issue or maybe loading issue on the second order construct that you need to drop or and so on. If you have low loading and yeah, an extra issue yeah so that's my answer okay thank you and then uh, one other question is uh, just now i get and that is you just mentioned composite uh, factor uh, in pls so what do you mean by composite factor uh -huh. uh, what do you mean composite huh? okay uh, when you use fact uh, okay when you use a factor model you have uh, okay uh, put it simple 
when you talk about variance, you have two types of variance. I put a layman term. I don't use you know, fancy term. When you talk about uh, variance, you have two types, unique variance and share variance, right? When you talk about unique and share variance, that is what happening in a factor model way where you have share variance, you have unique variance. Share variance is one issue where you need your correlation of uh, items error can actually correlate to other items. You share the correlation. When you move into composite, you composite modeling, you don't actually look into error where you will not have error. All the items itself will then form a score. And this score is actually an absolute value score where you have call it just, I call it just a unique variance for me. Rather than this, they do not share any variance to other items from different constructs. So that is the difference between a composite modeling or composite model or as well as the factor model. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you taking your time and, no, you know, no problem, no problem. Yeah. About higher order constructs. Uh, and again, um, uh, if you agree, I would say it again. If anybody has any questions or if they want to work with you, mm -hmm. they should just email you. Is that right? Yeah, sure. Not, not a problem. Um, welcome to, you know, opportunities. Uh, collaboration yeah especially yeah i haven't worked with faisan so one day we will definitely work on something yeah so, <laughs> yeah we will definitely work um, on something yeah so yeah i'm yeah. welcome for a lot of opportunities and collaboration yeah thank you again thank you very much jackie thank yeah, no you no problem no problem i think that's goodbye. all right that's all right yes 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 yeah, yes. Okay. yeah. Thank you. goodbye okay.